Hello folks, hope all is going well with you. It's time for some more Hobby Nightmares. If you like what I do, the old Patreon is down below if you want to get me a beer or a coffee going into the new week to get me set up. If not, sit back, relax and jump in and hopefully we can convince you to join us and subscribing to our channel by listening to the old Hobby Nightmares and having a good time. So, first of all, when this loads, it's Big Mike. Big Mike. And he says... Uh, this story will have its lows and its highs. Isn't it highs and lows? Before starting to take a sip of tea, as this may, bit, may, this may be a bit on the longer side of things, depending on how much I end up including. Also, worth noting that my grammar and punctuation are not the best, and I will try to do better in the future. That's fine, man. I mean, you know, we, we, all, we all struggle with it sometimes. I struggle with it sometimes. Um, I only realise, like, how harsh I can be on other people. When I'm writing myself and I'm going, oh my god, I'm such an idiot. The way that I <laughs> spell and do certain things. Anyway, this isn't that long, so you've done okay. Anyway, I play Imperial Guard, and painting slash playing is how I regulate my mental health. Like so many others do in this hobby. Unfortunately, I suffer from being able to paint 2,000 points within one month. And only being able to play a game once a month and regularly get interrupted by my job. Also worth noting that there's not many places local that play 40k near me. I'm American from the southeast, so the closest places are an hour drive away, and I don't have a driving license yet. In America, that's a must, man. In America, that is a... Uh, in the UK, you can get away with not having a driver's license, because everywhere's kind of a train ride away, and all travel in the UK is extortionate. So, even though public transport is expensive, so is your car. You know what I mean? All of it's expensive. Um... But in the US, man, it's, it's a non-negotiable. You, you need to be able to drive. It's just one of those things. Uh, so, on to the nightmare part of things. I am a teenager, or at least I will be until later this year, and whilst life has been rough before, it was always manageable. Cue the pandemic. My mother was very strict on masks and staying indoors. I didn't mind the masks. I used it as an excuse to wear a gas mask in public. <laughs> All you little cosplayers. That, and it was the only thing that prevented me from being sick from pollen. But that meant I had to cut out tennis. And being homeschooled, that was losing my social experience and a hobby I loved and still haven't had the chance to get back into. My father, on the other hand, was a die-hard Trump supporter. Immediately, issues arrived between the two, with my father regularly making comments that insisted he thought my mother was cheating. She wasn't. She just wanted some privacy, as my father regularly would stalk her using my iPhone or Facebook whenever he wanted to check on on her, even taking my phone at times to do so, okay? Um, well, that seems like the kind of thing that could be solved with, with either marriage therapy or talking to each other, you know what I mean? Um, I, I will say this, man. I will say this. Like, if you're a, a partner, a man or a woman, and you suspect your other half of doing something like that, it's no fun place to be, you know. Uh, most people will do anything to get to, to set their minds at ease, so don't be too harsh on your dad. I know it's, like, not a good thing, but, you know. Most people will do anything to get that out of their heads. Anyway. Well, arguing followed suit, and the walls of my house are pretty thin. For context, I'm a middle child, and whilst relations with my brothers could be better... I knew I had to distract my younger brother from the constant arguing that led in that, that led into 3 a.m. or longer at the cost of my own mental health. I never really could switch my brain off like I could with tennis. Sorry if it took long to get to the hobby bit, but here it is. Fast forward to October 2022. I was finally going places again, and I picked up scale modelling. On my way to my family's friend's birthday, we had to make a stop, and guess what stood straight across the street from where we had parked? a Warhammer store, and I, and I was able to go in briefly. Alright. The guy running the store is amazing. Handed me a figure of the month as soon as I entered, and didn't push the new Games Workshop sales tactic or anything, and was very helpful. I walked out with my first kit being the old plastic Cadian Command Squad, but for the next year, I only built and painted, so I had little to no social interactions. Okay. Um, one thing I will say about American stores is that, for the most part, 
they are able to do and get away with things that, that most other stores aren't, right? Um, Games Workshop don't really jump down their throat or anything. In the UK, you are watched like a hawk. Literally. Your stock levels are watched, and you are watched like an absolute hawk. In the US, you kind of get away with things because it's, it's a much bigger country, and they don't really care about, you know, most of the stores over there. Eventually, things got serious. It got to the point where if it wasn't for the fact that I wanted to be there for my little brother and help him with a better childhood than I, than I, than I got, I would have shot myself and still debated it some days, and that's about when I ended up deciding to play a game of 40k. 15 Cadians against 11 Sisters of Battle. A very small battle, and I won. I convinced the dude to let me win my first game. He wasn't even the store manager, but just a local. After that, I was just hooked. Okay, fair enough. I mean, I don't think I'd let you win. If somebody said, can you let me win, please, my first game, I'd try and win hard. <laughs> but no. No, because you asked. Because you asked, I'm going to try and beat you now. Anyway. I don't know how exactly to fill the gap here, so if any details are missing, that's probably because of this. I need to work on writing out things better. Anywho, I was still pretty messed up as things had only escalated with a new job and I didn't have much time given I mainly worked weekends as it was a seasonal job. Almost exactly one year after I had bought my first guard model, I meet who I will refer to as Dave. Name switched as I figured I'd use Dave as a good example as it's been a while since the last time that happened on the channel. Dave is an orc player. And goes and goes without me. Thin, he's a really good guy. What? And goes without me, Thin. He's a really cool guy. Okay, I'm gonna leave that there. I don't know, but that makes no sense. But okay, Dave's a really cool guy. Fair enough. Before I met him, usually I'd walk into the store and hope somebody noticed I was awkwardly standing near the tables with a case full of models. But after a game which took so long, the store was closing by the start of turn three. He invited me to his 40k group, which I was nervous at, uh, at first, as it's been years since I was a part of any local group in real life. But things, um, but things interested easier, I, again, I don't know, uh, but things interested easier as the platform was the Discord with which I used to bring, uh, to, I used to, I was used to using comfortable with, okay, apologies if there are any run on sentences. It's been a while without a pause. Use it to take a sip of tea. Yeah, man. Um, when you're writing, make sure you literally... You calm yourself down a bit, dude. Like you, you, You're writing like... All of these sentences are globbing together and, and you need to calm down a bit. I can tell you're really high strung. Um, any English teacher or somebody who edits for a living, i.e. me, will be able to tell your mood just by the way you write. Um, you're either at work here or you are, you know, very highly strong at the moment. Hmm... It only took a day or two before I ended up fitting in immediately with this new group as the group's guard player. Good. That always happens. If a new player of a new army comes in, everybody dotes on that guy because you need to keep him around because you want a new army in the new in the group. And things really kicked off after a guy who had never met me in person picked up the limited edition Commissar for me from the World Championship. And now instead of going home and having one or two online friends who don't know what Warhammer is, that would listen to me talk about games I had played, I have an actual group I get to meet in real life, which actually notice the tiny details in paint jobs I've done and other things. Anywho, that's getting off topic. Recently, I've noticed I am a lot a better person after having been invited to a group with actual people that aren't family in it, who I can talk to face to face, once a month, but still. It raised my mood by a lot. I also have a lot more energy now than before, as I used to have to, to decline offers to play with my little brother, or games we used to love playing together, as I was always exhausted. Great, man. And, and th this that's the difference, like, you know what I mean? Even months a month. People say to me all the time, like, when I say to them, you, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be an introvert, you know, well, not you shouldn't be an introvert, but you should try and fight your, your introvert impulses. And they say, well, I don't want to go out all the time. Who says anything about all the time? Once a month's good enough, dude. Let's go once a month. You know? Recently, I bought the entire Imperial Guard section from that Games Workshop. $1,100 of models total, 
and painted what turned out to be almost 2,000 points in one month on the dot. That month was one of the best of my life, and shortly after I managed to get another game with Dave in, an, in at a new larger place. We've played twice now, and haven't got past turn 3 for some reason or another, but I just go to play Warhammer for a few hours and not to worry about scores or anything else, so that's fine by me. Unfortunately, things have dropped off recently. Yeah, the reason why you're only getting to turn 3, mate, is because that's the way the game's fucking designed. It's shit. Um, I've started wor I, I, I've started having worsening back pain, and I cannot stand up for long periods of time without feeling like someone's squeezing directly on the nerve. Hmm. Okay, that, that, that doesn't sound very nice. Um, guess what that is? Exactly what's happening? Scoliosis. It sucks at my spine. And it is a bit curved. Okay, that's that's really shitty. Scoliosis has made it hard to play 40k. Given the new, given the game's workshop has two chairs total, I sometimes will have to stand up the entire game, and by the end of it, I have to take some sort of pain relief. Ibuprofen, nothing serious. So the car ride home is not entirely spent in pain. This new venue I found though has chairs for every table, so that's amazing. Not sure what to end off on as it's a situation of highs and lows, but I do want to make something clear to people. Join a group. It could genuinely save your life. Finally, I want some advice. I am basically trapped in my house and in my room for most days of my life, with stresses like divorcing parents and medical issues, especially given I'm American on the latter. I have started, have started taking their toll, and after the realisation that I most likely cannot get the jobs I've dreamed of having my whole life, Thanks to this curved spine, I find myself struggling to find motivation to keep going at this point, and I'm back on the level of my only reason for not being six foot under is because I'm not put my, I cannot put my little brother through that. Is there any sort of thing you can recommend I start doing to help get through these rough patches? I can't get out of the house much, which makes that even harder. Thanks, reading. Sorry for how poorly it's structured. I promise I'll work on that in the future emails. No worries, man. Um, again, I think a lot of it's due to your mood. What, rather than you're not being very good at writing. Do you know what I mean? I think a lot of it's duty mood. So, um... How do we do this? How do we do this? Well, as far as I'm concerned, man... You have already answered your own question. You know? What worked last time? Going to a new group worked last time. Going to your group and having fun worked last time. So it'll work this time as well. If, if you continue doing what you're doing, you know, um, if you can, all right, if the reason you're not going to your group is because of the, of the, you need a chair thing, so you're going to this new store and you can't get there as often, all right, what you do, you have, you have an honest and frank conversation with your games workshop manager who, or whoever else is there running the store, and you tell them exactly what is going on with you and your health. I say, look, I love playing, I love coming to the store and playing, but I need a chair, you know, I need a chair. Can I have a chair when I when I do my, my gaming in the store? Nobody will say no. No one's going to say no to you, right? That's number one. Number two, continue going to your groups. Don't let anybody get in the way of it. And no matter what happens in that month, you go to that group. All right? It is, it is a sacrosanct thing that you have to do. You go to that group. And you make sure... That you're having fun you go there you have fun and that's it right number three i really do recommend one page rules maybe introducing that to your gaming group or something because you, instead of getting three turns in you'll be getting two or three games in per session do you know what I mean? per four hour session or five hour session you'll be having a lot more fun and getting a lot more games in um and in terms of everything else right okay uh bit of tough love here all right there's a thing that I note about people who say that they're going to do something to themselves. Where they always say, I couldn't put X through that. Do you know what I mean? Don't make other people in your life responsible for you being here. Alright? I used to say that, uh, the same thing about my, about my mum. I used to say, I couldn't put my mum through that. The same reason why I'm, I'm still here. You know, I haven't committed suicide because I couldn't put my mum through that. Listen, it's not my mum's responsibility to keep me around. And it's not your little brother's responsibility to keep you around either. Do you know what I mean? 
Um, you know, that, that that's you looking for an excuse to just step, you know, you, to be, not, not, not to not do it, but to be able to say it. To be able to say, oh, I wouldn't be here if, you know what I mean? Don't do that. Step back from that. That's not something you want to be thinking about, okay? Um, since I've been doing this, and I've spoken to a lot of people who are on the who are on their last legs, so to speak. You know what I mean? They're on their last nerve. Or, or people who are depressed and very nearly at the point where they would do it, you know? Um, I've come to realise that... I, I used to really sympathise with people who, who made that choice to, 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 to do away with themselves, to self-delete, do you know what I mean? Um, now, I genuinely think you're either mentally ill, seriously... Or really selfish. That, that, that's that's me now. That, that that's where I am now. Um, simply because I've seen people come back from some heinous, heinous shit, and who really reg who regretted they even had that thought years later. They're like, oh my god, can you imagine? I wouldn't even be here. The sheer amount of people I've come across who've been like that with me. It's oh yeah, years ago I, I really did think about it, but thank God I didn't because now look where I am. Do you know what I mean? Like 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 the the shit that. The sheer amount. I've, I've not had anybody who I've spoken to over this journey on YouTube who was thinking that way a while ago and and is still thinking that way a few years later. It, you know, it, it will pass, dude. Like, I'm, I'm being completely serious. It will pass. What do you think is going to happen to the people around you if you make that decision? You know, you leave behind devastation. Absolute devastation. And for what? Right? Life's a bit hard. Well... You know, welcome to life, man. I, I, I know, I know it sounds horrible, but I, I think I genuinely think you need to hear it. You know, it, it, depression and anxiety and all these other things are awful things to go through. Trust me, they're absolutely awful. They really are. And the pain that you're in with the scoliosis, yeah, it, it's not great. And treatment options in America aren't great. I get that. I completely get that. But on the flip side of that, I've known people in, in much worse positions who didn't do sh who, who didn't do shit like you're talking. You know what I mean? Like, I, I've known I've known people on the street. I've known people who who have been who've lost everything. Who've lost their family. They've lost their kids. They've had it all taken away from them. You know, uh, they're addicted to, to to heroin and all sorts of other drugs, and they're not there. They find a way to come back. If they can find a way to come back, so can you. And a lot of people who tout mental health they'll say well you know you can't say, sh say shit like this to people you've got to be understanding who says i'm not being understanding I'm, I'm telling you what you need to hear right i'm not blowing smoke up your ass i'm not telling you you're this amazing person who you know you should never give up and blah 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 blah, blah. no mate sometimes you need, you need to bend down and touch grass i like, okay listen you know i i know the situation i'm in I know where I am in life, okay? But I got out of this once before, and I'll get out of this again. It's fine. And just accept, by the way, the fact that you might be here again. Even if you get out the next time, all of your problems that magically disappear, you could be here again in a little while. But just realize, this too shall pass, my friend. You shall get on the other side of it, and you'll be okay. The last thing I wanted to talk about, in terms of your answer, is... You've just spent $1,100 on fucking models, dude. You're telling me you can spend $1,100 on models on a disposable throwaway hobby and not have money to go and get your own place? Right? There are very few places in America where that's not possible on, on 1500 bucks. Right? Do you know what I mean? I, I know because I looked. <laughs> you know, I, I lived in quite an exclusive area of North Chicago. Right? So I looked at places like Evanston. I looked at places like, well, I was in Winnetka, but I looked at places like uh, Evanston and and all, all different places like that. And it was really, really, really nice. They were really nice places, and they were affordable. Okay, like they weren't like they were like a two bedroom like place to rent. Um, if you can spend eleven hundred bucks, just drop it one month on models, you can afford a, a place to yourself on your own right you know i would at least look to see what your little brother does could, could can you imagine your little brother getting to an age where he's got a little job too dude you can get a two-bedroom place to yourselves 
and have the time of your fucking lives. You're telling me you want to miss out on that? No, mate. Come on. Come on. You know, when that, when that kid gets old enough and he can get his own place and you can get your own place, Jesus Christ, dude, you're going to have such fun, right? Get out of there. I don't know how old you are, but if you can drop 1,100 bucks on, them, on, on models, you can afford to get your own place. I'm sorry. There's, there's no... There's no Western country in my mind where you can't you can't figure that shit out, you know. Hmm. Because if you can drop eleven hundred bucks on on models every month, you can certainly drop eleven hundred bucks on rent. I'm telling you now, rent is not that much. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Now, that'll be unheard of, unless you're in like bloody uh, your downtown San Francisco or something. You know, eleven hundred bucks is unheard of, right? So so especially in a, in, a, in a normal area. So, you know, you take 600, 700 bucks of that 1100 a month, you've got your own place. You've got your own place, your own space to do with as you will. Can you imagine that? All right? What you're doing right now is you're stuck in a rut and you're stuck on pause. You're stuck on pause in your parents' place. Not a great place to be. All right? Get yourself out of there. By any means necessary, get yourself out of there. You can always go back... And look after your, your your little brother, but at least now you've got a place where you're not stuck in it. Your little brother doesn't know any better right now. He's a kid. All right. You need to get yourself out of that situation so you can be your best for him. Remember what you said to me before about having the energy levels and stuff. I bet you now you're not doing anything with your little brother because you don't have the energy, right? Because you're depressed. Then sort it out. Then be a man and sort it out. Last time you did that, you went and found your own space to go and game and go and get in the hobby, and it sorted you out good and proper, and you were and you were a better brother and a better person for that. Now you're right back in the rut again. Sort it out. Get yourself out of that situation. So when you come back to that house to look after your brother and to see him, you're on your best game. You can make sure he's having a decent childhood. And even if you want to, you've got your own place, get him the fuck out of there and say, look. He's staying at my place tonight. We're going to have some fun. We're going to watch some movies. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. You know, a lot of your problems sort themselves out when you leave that house. All right? You know? Um, again, medical bills aside, I don't know your situation, dude. I don't know that, that in, in, in depth. But that's my advice. All right? Get back to your hobby. Your hobby group. Okay? Be honest with people about the things that you need at that hobby group. And start having fun again. Look to yourself and the people around you and, and, and look at... Listen, yeah, you may be in, in, a, in a slightly disadvantaged situation, but that doesn't mean you need to be making the ultimately stupid decision, all right? That's what it is. That's what that is. It's the ultimate stupid decision. It's the one decision you can never take back. Literally, the only one you can never take back is that one, all right? Don't even think it. Don't even go there, all right? Look to other people. Come on, come on the Discord, man. Come on our Discord and talk to people. They'll let you know. They'll be like, yeah. Some of the some of the stories you you hear on the Discord are harrowing. You're like, oh my god, how are you still here? And they are. Right? They are. They're just carrying on. All right. Um, and finally, get yourself out of that situation. If you can afford to spend eleven hundred bucks on models. Then you can afford to get yourself a place. A small, dingy place in a bad area of town doesn't matter. Get yourself out of that situation and get yourself into like a one year, two year lease somewhere. Just get yourself out of there. Alright? Pack light and get yourself out of there. Okay? Alright, cool. Uh, Lost Sabre says is next. So that took a while, guys. But when somebody's threatening to do something like that or is talking about that, I need to take some time to talk to them because it's, um, yeah, it's not something I can just breeze past. You know what I mean? Mm. Lost Saber says, Hey, North. Hope you're doing well. Things are good here. I'm currently finishing up a few art projects that should see me through to the rest of the year. Oh, that's nice. <clears throat> anyway... I wanted to regale you uh, of my time at Games Workshop and the time that I left the, the company for good. I'll be re real here just for a moment. Working for Games Workshop 
was the best job I'd ever had aside from the one I have now. The people there genuinely are amazing for the most part. I remember my line manager helping me through my nan's death, those of you in the States, my grandma's death, and actually letting me have paid time off for as long as I needed and then jumping and then turning up to her funeral on the day just to lend his support and be the games workshop representative there at the ceremony that's cool man that's good that's good that meant so much to me he also did a whip round to get me some flowers for the funeral too a real classy gesture to be honest and I never thought I'd leave okay I love your videos on mental customers I had a lot of those in my time but to be honest I just looked at them as, as being a hazard of the job there were none that really got to me even being the person customers took their ire out on in the bad old days of games workshop ignoring its audience us managers were on the front line of people absolutely hating the company and its actions that also didn't really annoy me I understood it and most people I explained it to telling them I couldn't do anything about it, I'm a manager of a small store, etc. They got it, and let me be. No, the poisoning of the well for my career came from within. Okay. Namely, my new line manager, and a gradual influx of other odd people at both headquarters and in the wider company. I could not really put a time frame on it, but the middle management of Games Workshop kind of exploded for a while and all of a sudden instead of just talking to the head of retail myself i was directed to one regional manager or another a regional trainer or another or something else that was the first warning sign to me my directives were coming from people who were making nonsense suggestions one middle manager came into my store suggesting that i change around where all my stock was he wanted 40k by the door as the first thing you see when you come in i said and i quote i mean we've just had our best quarter in five years can we not just put the new releases by the door for 40k and leave it at that this is this isn't a negotiation he said stony faced i know what you're going to say this is the moment your career at games workshop ends your card has been marked sir but it really was not like that at the stage north. But it was coming. Yeah, that was going to be my my takeaway there. Yeah. The, the, the second you, you say anything like that, you're done. Uh, if you if you ever... Guys, if you're listening to this and you ever work for Games Workshop as a manager or, or whatever, right? And you are given a directive, just fucking do it. If you want to keep your job, do it. The minute you come back, especially if you've only been there for a year or two... The minute you come back with any sort of suggestion or any sort of amendment to, to what they've said to you, even if you know what they've said isn't going to work in your store, your card is marked. Alright? The minute you say anything like that, like what this guy just said, and just a normal suggestion, right? All he said is, you know, can we just have the can we just have the the, the new 40k releases in the doorway? Because, you know, the store's working well as it is. The minute you have any pushback like that, you're done. You are done. Right? They don't want you. They really don't want you. They do not want you there. Because, again, they want nodding dogs. They want people there going, yes, okay, yes. Yes, sir, yes, that's great. Yeah, thank you. That's what they want. If you go in there and you, you want to put your own spin on things, you... Have a disagreement with them about how things should be run your card is marked and you may not be fired there and then in fact you won't be fired there and then but they will make sure that you want to leave you know it'll start it'll start what i mean by that is the constant hazing you know uh, well, and okay an example from when, from when i was there so when we went to a training retreat um they all knew, all the managers knew, and, and the trainers knew, that a few months ago I had gone to a training retreat without being told that I needed to have my Games Workshop gear. Because it was literally in, in, in the middle of a bloody hotel, and, you know, nobody else, from what I could see, was wearing the Games Workshop stuff. 
and then the next day, everybody's wearing Games Workshop gear. I was never told that, so I was like, well, I wasn't told, you know. And they knew I was super sensitive about that because I was trying to make sure to make a good impression. So then the next time, <clears throat> they did a, a training thing in a bar, in a hotel bar, a few months later. I went down there and I made sure to pack my Games Workshop gear. I packed it and I put it on when we went down for our, you know, our, our general meeting. Nobody else was wearing Games Workshop gear. Great, you know. But I thought, well, at least I haven't been caught out. Do you know what I mean? So I, 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 I get a, a Coke from the bar. And, and one of the managers comes over, very annoyed, and says, you're not meant to be wearing that. You're not meant to be wearing that. Uh, oh, oh, am I not? No. Well, I got into trouble last time for not wearing it. So do you mind if I if I get some of the higher-ups to tell me that I'm not supposed to be wearing this? Why? Well, oh. never mind, dude. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, it, it's just, yeah. So, so that kind of thing, that's the kind of thing they'll do. They'll start doing shit like that to you. And I would, I would put it down to a coincidence, just something that happens, if it didn't happen every other week. When I was there every other week, some shit like that would happen, right? So I, I got one guy's name on an email wrong once. Jerry and Gary. Jerry and Gary. They sit right fucking next to each other, and they're both bald. I got one name on an email wrong. I got an angry phone call saying, how dare I get something? It's, it's so disrespectful. You know, who gives a fuck, dude? Who gives a fuck? Really? I mean, that's, I don't know, man. It's just absolute fucking nonsense. And then I had my trainer coming in saying, oh, yeah, he was really hurt and upset by that, that you that you got his name wrong in an email. Dude, the guy should fucking grow up then, shouldn't he? And I, yeah, call me like a man. Come in here and talk to me about it, rather than sending you the little fucking bald weasel. Anyway, over the next year or so, these instances started becoming more and more prevalent as we head into the 2010s. The company is changing around me, and the near constant badgering at this point is making sure that I don't even want to go to work. Told you. Yeah. You, 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 you stuck your neck out once, my friend. And it got chopped off. It is getting to the point where once a week, I'm getting an email or a phone call asking me about stock levels, which are fine, constant health and safety checkups that no other stores seem to be having when I asked, and a general disinterest in any, any of my ideas or input on training days. That's a big sign, that last one. When you go to a training day and other managers are getting like all of their ideas out there and they go, oh, that's a good idea, that's a good idea. And then you say something completely normal on the same track and everyone looks at you like you've grown another fucking head, right? That's another time. You know, you need to get out of there. They don't like you. They don't want you. You're flying the ointment, right? They're waiting for you to, they're waiting for you to resign, essentially, you know? Um, it sucked and it generally was growing as a snowball effect. From a few incidents of me standing up for myself to a near constant badgering. And it only got worse. My theory is that this explosion of middle management essentially meant instead of the company being led like a family where everybody kind of knows each other, we have an insulation blanket between the top brass and everybody else. Hmm, okay. Good. Okay, yeah, I I'm with you on that one. By the way, whenever I pause, I know we're getting new people joining the channel now, which is great. Whenever I pause, I'm taking a sip of tea, all right? Um, because my throat gets a bit parched after a while doing this. To me, this generally meant that everything slowed down, and in the end, the middle management started to get rid of people they didn't re that didn't really fit their vision for the company. Especially when the company was starting to tank, and it was, and they were looking for people to blame. Sure, don't blame your insulting prices, don't blame your shocking treatment of the fan base. Don't blame your greedy executives and shareholders paying themselves obscene amounts of money out of the coffers. No. Blame hard-working, small-time retail managers. Sigh. Yeah. As a Games Workshop manager, dude, you're the first person to go. You're the first person who, who gets a smack when things aren't going great. The last flashpoint came to me... When I have a trainer, 10 years my junior, and a new line manager, 
talking me through how to speak to customers whilst the store is closed. This is mandatory training, so I am told. I have been running a, a successful store longer than either of these two freaks have been in the company combined. To cut a long story short, it was a frosty morning. I am taking... Uh, okay. I am being shown and talked through bad advice after bad advice. Being told to keep asking questions of the customer. To follow them to where they are looking at products to inform any questions I might be asking them. In the end, I kind of reply with, and I quote, That sounds a lot like pestering my customer base. They look at me as if I, as if I just slapped them. Oh my god. Well, how would you do it? The trainer asks in a combative tone. Well, I say, usually I let people come in and I say hello and ask if they need any help if they are new to me. If not, I invite them for a catch-up. That's it, that's it though. After that, I generally leave them to wander around the store to where they want to go and if they have been in an area for a while and seem a bit indecisive, I will head over there to fix something nearby. That gives me an excuse to strike up a conversation. If it goes quiet, I leave them to it after making my suggestions. If not, I still take my leave as I want them to be able to have their space to make their own decision after our little talk. Most of the time, I end up with a decent sale. That right there, unquote, that right there is how you do it. All right? Somebody's in your store, you don't know them, or even if you do know them, you go nearby, you get something off the shelf and you look at it yourself like, oh, where should I put this back, you know? That kind of a thing. And then you strike up a conversation, you know? And you, oh, man, how's it going? Yeah, fine, yeah, cool, how are you? What are you looking at? Oh, some orcs. Oh, you're looking at orcs. Oh, cool, man. Yeah, cool. What kind of orcs are you thinking of? You know, that kind of thing. You go into a conversation. Um, I remember once, back in the day, I was doing some training as a as a staff member, not as a not as a uh, as a manager. Uh, one sec, can take a sip of tea. So yeah, I was doing training as a as a staff member and. This girl walks in, and a bit of a butch girl, but, you know, no no, no judgment here. And my manager says, yeah, go over and talk to her so I can hear what you're like with customers. It's about a month into the job. So I walk over there, and I start talking to her, and I ask her loads of questions about her hobby. And it's great, you know, going really well. And she's like, yeah, I might pick something up. I might pick up some, I can't remember what she was picking up, some Necrons or something. So yeah, yeah, cool, cool, awesome. And she asked me, so what are you into? So I said, oh, I, I like Grey Knights. And she goes, oh, what are they? They sound cool. And so I, I show her the Grey Knights and I explain them. You know, this is what the Grey Knights are and this is what the lore is. <clears throat> this she takes me about two minutes. And, and she's there enraptured and goes, oh, this is really cool. Do you know what? I'm going to get some of these as well. So she gets some Grey Knights as well. So she gets some Grey Knights, some Necrons, heads over to the till. I ring her through. And she says, you know, her boyfriend's going to take one army, she's going to take another, but she hasn't decided which one she's going to do yet. Okay, cool. I show her what, she, what else she needs to do the models. Some clippers that she has at home, and some super glue that she also has at home. And she buys a spray can for each army, a, a, a silver one, and I think it's like a lead belcher and a black. Great, cool. And away she goes out the store. I walk back to my manager beaming, like, oh my god, that went so well. And he, and he said to me, that's the worst interaction I've heard in a long time with a customer. And I was floored. Flabbergasted. And he told me, you just you, you told us stuff about your own hobby. And I was confused. I was like, y yeah. And he said, well, why did you do that? And I said, because she asked me. You know? She asked me. Well, you shouldn't do that. Like, you should only you only talk about their their hobby, what they want. Don't make it all about you. And I was like, dude, she made it all about me, and she didn't. She asked me she asked me two questions, and I answered the two questions, and then went, then went right back to what she wanted. You know, I sold her models that she wanted. She wanted the Necrons. We talked about those for a bit and what she was going to do with them. Then she asked me what I was into. I told her I was into Grey Knights. She asked me to, to introduce her to them and to talk about them, and I did. She then bought some Grey Knights. What part of that was, was about... So I, again, it was our first argument. Like, all our, one of our first arguments. I, I'm surprised he didn't sack me. 
I really am. Um, but hey, you know. So, most of the time, I end up with a decent sale. So he says, right? Cool. A decent, maybe, the trainer crooned. But not the best sale you could have gotten every time. Do you know what? I need to read that bit again, don't I? So, um, Sabre basically tells him about, you know, his own selling technique and what he does. Which is completely reasonable selling technique, right? And he then ends with, most of the time, you know, I end up with a decent sale, unquote. To which the trainer replies, decent, maybe, but not the best sale you could have gotten every time, unquote. I don't need the best sale every time, I said. I need the best sale every time for the customer and their hobby that keeps them coming back, I reply. They are shaking their heads at me. I say something completely out of character because my frustrations just boil out of me at this point. Are you guys, like, retarded, I ask? <laughs> That's so fucking... All right, you're sacked. You're sacked. But that's really funny. That's that's fucking great. That's fucking great. Are you guys like... Because they're over there shaking their heads to something completely normal that you just said. And you're like, are you guys like retarded? <laughs> I ask. Things degenerate rather quickly. They call that wholly inappropriate and offensive. Which it was, and I apologised. I explain to them my frustrations with the situation and with their approach. They tell me, and I quote, This is how it is. Work with us here, please. Okay. When they leave that evening, I know that my time is up. I write my resignation letter on my store computer and print it off my own records before sending it by email and getting my copy. Oh my god. Another good manager leaves. I work my notice and sign up for university, art, soon after. I then went on to be an artist for fantasy books and other things like that. I do a lot of private commissions too, for people's walls. Still, sending that email, I had a lump in my throat and a tear in my eye. But I just knew in my heart that the company had left me behind. I was done, exhausted, and I knew the new uni university year was coming up and I knew I could get on that course if I wanted to, as well as a, a nice student loan. There were a lot of old-timers who left, like me. I know of two who left in the same year, and had been there for decades. It's only today that I see that the long, long process of stopping games in the store and turning stores into a sort of hobby Apple store actually started well over a decade ago, and people like me with the skin they needed to shed to do it. Sorry for the down and north. I will send in. Uh, I will send one in about bad customers like you asked, and that will not. That will be a lot more lively. Lots of love, Saber. Yeah, I'm doing that on Thursday. So get your. Uh, if you've had a bad experience as a games workshop manager or staffer, make sure you send them in uh, with customers. Make sure you send them in because I'll be reading them out on Thursday. That'll be a video about you know the worst customers that you've ever had. In your Kings Workshop store. That would be awesome. Thank you. So. That is Hobby Nightmares for today. Sorry my voice is starting to give out a little bit. I love you a long time. I will speak to you tomorrow. Where we're going to be doing a Primark tier list. Which should be really really cool. And then we'll do some more Hobby Nightmares on Wednesday. And then on Thursday. We'll be discussing your worst customers. That you've ever had at Games Workshop. So if you've ever worked for Games Workshop. Send me an email. Of the worst customers you've come across. Maybe even send me a message on Discord or, or the or the traumatized X Games Workshop Managers Corner that we have on the, on the Discord. Head over there and send in some stuff to me so I can read it out on Thursday. Love you all a long time. See you then. Have a good one. Bye now.